Okay, so now we're recording. As you may already know, last October, the seventh edition of the publication manual of the American Psychological Association was released. Our presentation today will examine the main changes of this new release, and then we will highlight how these changes affect Academic Writer, which is a writing tool that the library subscribe to. Today's event is being recorded, and the recording link will be emailed to all attendees along with a link to a Google Doc that contains additional resources. The recording link will also be made available on the library website. And with that, I will now turn things over to Rebecca. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, the first part of this presentation is going to focus on those changes to the seventh edition. So we'll get right into that. So this is an image of what the publication manual looks like. Um, we have copies of it in our reference collection. As Adele had mentioned, this edition is replacing the sixth edition that was previously published in 2009. And this came out in 2019. So we're gonna take a look at the changes to some of the references and in-text citations. Um, for journal article citations, your DOIs should be formatted the same way as URLs. So it should begin with that HTTPS um, colon slash slash DOI.org, followed by the DOI number. Standardized um, DOIs, they should be in um, that standard format. There's no period at the end of the DOI, so as not to interfere with the linkability of that DOI. And then you also, um, one of the new updates to um, journal article citations, you don't want to include database information in your reference list entry. All of these um, bracketed information here, this is the corresponding page number and section number within that APA manual, um, seventh edition. So if you wanted to read about more, um, feel free to you know, grab a copy and you can flip to those pages to read more about these changes. For book citations, um, a big change with this current edition is that the publisher location is no longer included in the reference. So you'll see um, in the example below in the sixth edition, um, you have New York, New York highlighted. That would be stripped out in the seventh edition. You're completely omitting any um, publisher location information. You also want to use the copyright date, which is usually on the copyright page of the work that you're looking at as the date of publication for your reference. For in-text citations, um, another significant change with this new edition is that with three or more authors, you're now going to shorten that in-text citation immediately to um, just the first author's surname, and then you're going to use et al. Whereas previously in the sixth edition, you would list up to five authors in your in-text citation. Um, for this current seventh edition, it's now um, three or more authors are going to use that abbreviated version as you see in this example here. Surnames and initials are now going to be, um, for your end reference list, should include up to 20 authors instead of the sixth edition's um, seven authors. So you should be providing this in your references list. Um, and an example of this is shown highlighted in green. Um, so again, it's just giving more authors credit. And I think that's probably why they, they um, made this you know, change to this um, edition of this format here. For websites, um, URLs are no longer going to be retrieved, um, preceded by retrieved from unless the material is um, something that would change over time. So like a blog or a dictionary entry. And you wanna make sure that the website name is included in your citation unless it's the same as the author and that the web page title is italicized. So you'll see that the retrieved from is omitted in the seventh edition um, example here as well as the italization of the web page title. For social media citations, um, this is a fairly new addition to the APA um, style guide. When you're citing original content from social media sites like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you wanna use the content of the post up to the first 20 words of the title. So this is just an example of how a tweet would um, be cited in your end references list. 
some more information about social media citations. Um, you don't want to alter the spelling or capitalization of social media references at all. Um, so if something um, had kind of obscure um, capitalization, I don't know if any of you are familiar with SpongeBob case, but that's like a mix of lowercase and capital letters, you would retain that in your end reference list citation. Um, you're also going to retain hashtags and links. And if possible, you should replicate emojis if they're used um, in any of those kinds of citations. If you're unable to replicate an emoji, you can um, bracket the Unicode's emoji chart description for that emoji. So for instance, we have these two examples below. Um, if your tweet, say, had the heart eyes emoji and you couldn't replicate it on your computer, you would put Unicode's um, emoji chart description of smiling face with heart eyes in brackets. The same thing with the Vulcan salute hand there. As far as paper format goes, there are um, some changes as well to that. Um, there's increased flexibility of fonts. So the sixth edition was very, very strict in um, having you use Times New Roman 12 point font, but now um, you have more options in the fonts that you can use for your paper. Um, so Calibri, Arial 11, um, Georgia 11, you can use any one of these and it would still um, be considered okay um, for that particular paper format. Another um, significant change is a change to the running head. Um, so the running head on the title page is no longer going to include the words running head with the colon. You're going to be um, omitting that. It should only include the page number now and then that abbreviated paper title in all caps. The running head is omitted in student papers. So unless you specifically tell your students to um, include it, they don't necessarily need to include it in, um, in their student papers. Okay, so for example, um, the sixth edition was requiring you to use that running head with the colon, which would precede your abbreviated um, paper title, but now it's just going to be your abbreviated paper title in all caps there. Heading levels three to five were updated to improve readability and um, how those formats or how that should be formatted is listed below here. Um, so level three should be flush left with a bold italic um, title case heading and then so on and so forth for the fourth and fifth um, level. And we'll take a look at that in um, a sample student paper that I have at the end of this um, segment's presentation. For sentence spacing, you wanna use only one space after the period at the end of a sentence. And then, um, a pretty big change with this edition as well is that they have an entire chapter dedicated to bias free language. So what does that mean? Um, they're trying to be more inclusive in the language that you use throughout your paper. So the singular they or there is endorsed as a gender neutral pro pronoun. And if you're using adjectives, um, you should actually be using nouns to label groups of people um, and descriptive phrases are preferred. So for instance, if you were writing a paper about minorities, you should actually be um, using the, the phrase underrepresented groups, which is a more acceptable phrase um, as per this edition of the APA guide. We um, have created a student paper template for your students to use, um, should they choose to. Um, there's a link directly to this template within this presentation, which you'll get a link to um, at the end of um, at the end of this presentation. Um, but you'll also, there's also a link within um, the resources that we're going to be giving you as well. But by clicking on this link, it'll link you out to that sample um, student paper template. And what your students could do is they could um, download this template and then overlay their own information on top of it. Um, so you'll see you know, all of the seventh edition changes have been incorporated into this template. We have, um, you know, the optional in this case for student papers running head without the words running head preceding it. Um, the pagination flush right with the margin here. Um, some changes to the title page. Your title now should be um, bolded. Um, and there should be a space between your title and um, your student's name and whatever other information you require them to provide on their title page. As we scroll down here, um, you'll see um, an abstract page if you require your students to add that. 
and then um, the proper heading levels. So if they were to use um, heading levels, all of these heading levels are formatted as per the seventh edition APA. Um, so here we're looking at the um, bolded, italicized level three. And if we keep going, um, the indented, bolded heading level four, heading level five, um, and that's the furthest heading level that we have here. And as we scroll to the very end, you'll notice um, another change in formatting. So for the seventh edition, it's requiring you to bold the word references on your references page. Um, so that should be centered. And then we have two very um, simplified example citations um, here as well for your students to kind of build off of um, for whatever they're citing. So this, um, again, is going to be included in that slide um, presentation that we were just looking at and also as a link in um, resources that we'll provide um, to you after this presentation. So that's it for my portion. I'm going to um, turn it over now to Adele and Lisa, who are going to go over academic writer and how um, that has changed. Thank you very much, Rebecca. I think that template's going to be a huge hit. That looks very helpful. So let me um, share my screen. Okay, so you should be seeing uh, the library homepage with a lovely picture of the Callahan campus. Okay, um, Lisa and I are going to highlight some of the updates that were made to the academic writer that conform to the seventh edition of the APA. So we're going to start by showing you how to access Academic Writer from the library homepage. And for demonstration purposes, we are using the Callahan Library homepage, but Academic Writer can be accessed from the McIntaggart Library homepage in the same manner. So from this page here, scroll down and we're going to click on databases and then Callahan list of databases. And this presents us with an alphabetical list of all the databases that the library subscribe to. So I'm going to scroll down until I find Academic Writer, and it's right here. Okay, and this is the home page for the Academic Writer. Now, if you're working on campus, as we are right now, you would be brought directly to this page that I'm sharing with you. However, if you're working from home or off campus, you'll be presented at this point with a login page where you must enter your MySJC credentials to proceed. And once you do that, once you're logged in at this point, there's one more a secondary login that you have to do. Even though we are logged in with our SJC credentials, there's one more step that you need to do to fully use Academic Writer. And you must have an Academic Writer account in order to save your work. To create an Academic Writer account, you're going to click on the welcome and then log in. And then you would either create an account or in this case, Lisa is going to log in to her account for us. And if you happen to already have an APA account, you would use that. Um, you would, that would be explained to you uh, if you were to click on create an account, it would say if you have an APA account already, use log in with that. Okay, thank you, Lisa. All right. So now an academic writer, there are three main components to it. Okay, you have learn, reference, and write. These are all referred to as centers. So I'm going to demonstrate the first two, learn and reference, and Lisa will give us a tour of the write center. Okay, so let's click on the learn tab up top. And the learn center consists of quick guides, which are short lessons tutorials, which are more in-depth lessons, and then samples. These, these illustrate uh, example papers, references, tables, and figures. I'm going to look briefly at each one of these. So I'm going to click on go to quick guides. And now, as you can see up top, you have tabs going across the top of the page. We're going to click through all of these, but the first one's the quick guides. There are 71 available, whereas with the previous version of Academic Writer, there were 66. Now, this page defaults to the list view, which groups these 71 
quick guides into eight different main headings. Uh, you can see the first one's the bias-free language, as Rebecca had already talked about, uh, citing sources, manuscript sections, etc. Okay, you can also browse by title. Up at the top left here, there's another browse by title option, and this view gives you a list, the alphabetical list of all 71 uh, quick guides not grouped in any categories. And with this new academic writer release, the quick guides and tutorials have been updated to include more interactive lessons that allow students to freely navigate and engage with the content. They also have knowledge checks integrated into the lessons rather than having self quizzes in a separate section. So this was a huge improvement from the previous version. If I click back on browse by topic, and I want to just look at the items, the subcategories under bias-free language. Now, most of these were already updated and some were um, added. The intersectionality was added with this new APA 7 edition and participation in research was added and socioeconomic status was added. So those are new ones. So if you wanted to learn about what this uh, section was about, you would click on the link and it brings you to the quick guide itself. And there's a table of contents beneath. And you can click on start learning. And then the table of contents shifts over to the left hand column here. And as you scroll through the pages, you can see on the left, it tells you it's how complete you are. Um, <clears throat> as you're reading through, it just keeps uh, telling you the percentage of the lesson that's complete. And again, these are the quick guides. So these are quick. That's the name quick guide. And we're going to back to results. And if I, there's two views where we defaulted to the list view. And there's also a grid view. If I click on that, that presents me with an alphabetical list again of those 71 guides. But this time it gives you a little annotation of what the topic is about. And there's also a link that brings you to the publication manual itself. Okay, so that's helpful. You can see exactly uh, where in the manual the uh, reference is and what it talks about. So I find that very useful. Okay, so now going across the next tab, we're going to go to the tutorials. And these 18 in-depth tutorials are viewed in a similar fashion as the quick guides were. And they've been updated with interactive lessons that include knowledge checks. Okay, going of course again to the right are sample papers. There were 10 of those. Next, sample references. There were 202 of those. Now this section experienced a major update as they have added 50 additional sample references. So this is a huge improvement here. There's also sample tables and sample figures. And if you had uh, stored any uh, guides or tutorials or papers, um, they would show up in your favorites list. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the reference center. So at the top tab, I'm going to click on reference. Okay, and in the references center, you can either manage the references you already have or add references. So all of your existing references should have been updated already to the seventh edition APA style. However, there may be some cases where the reference could not be fully updated. For instance, if you had an article with 20 authors, but had only listed seven in your existing citation. So you may have to, uh, you know, do a manual check on the references and make sure all the authors are in there now. Um, I'm going to click on manage my references. Okay, so these are some references that Lisa has in her account. And you can manage your references by editing them, deleting them, or exporting them to files that are compatible with other bibliographic software tools such as Zotero. And if I wanted to add a reference, I could click on this add references hyperlink. And now I'm presented with three options, three ways to add references. I can create using these forms down here. Now these forms are grouped into the uh, 
categories that align with the APA uh, handbook. And then that's in chapter 10. Uh, there are 47 new forms that have been added to cover every reference type in the publication manual. Okay, and I'm just going to point out a couple of notable forms. Uh, under periodicals, they've added blog posts. Under audiovisual media, they've added infographics and TED Talks. Under the websites category, they added Instagram photos, video, recorded webinars, and profile pages. And there's also legal forms that we added as well. So what you would do is you would just click through one of these and it's like a wizard. You just fill in the form as you, you know, it, actually let's click through journal article and we'll just show you quickly. Okay, so you would just fill in the form. And you're presented with all the relevant information and it's that easy. Okay, and then the next way to bring in uh, references is to import them. So you would import an RIS file uh, from some other platform, such as a database or Zotero. Okay, these are the options. And the other option you have to add references is to search. Now, you would use this search to you search the APA site info for existing references. So what we've done, we've already conducted the search, so this came up. Leisure reading and academic libraries. If I click on search, it's searching the APA Psych Info database for those terms. And sure enough, it comes up down here. So you could just select this and then add it to your references. Okay, and that's all I have for the Learn and the Reference Centers. So now I'm going to pass this off to Lisa, who's going to show us the Writing Center. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> today I'll be discussing the Write Center with you. So I'm going to click on the red tab at the top of the page. And this is the Writing Center. Once you're in the Writing Center, you have two options. You can either start a new paper or you can work on a saved paper. So let me start by showing you what happens if you click on Write a New Paper. There are nine templates available here for you that you can choose to start a new paper. For the purposes of today's demonstration, I'm going to be showing you a basic paper format. Once we click into the basic, temp the ba the basic paper template, you get asked, do you intend to use this paper for a student assignment or a professional manuscript? The title page on a student paper, the title page format has been updated to match the seventh edition guidelines. As Rebecca previously mentioned, the running head is no longer included in a student paper's header by default. It can be added to papers if it is required by an instructor. However, it is included, if you see in the description here, uh, in a professional paper and formatted consistently throughout those papers. It can be removed if it's not needed. The byline and affiliation in a professional paper are formatted according to the seventh edition guidelines and updates have been made to the author note. So I'm going to close out of this and go into one of my papers. If I can see. Sorry, it's okay. I covered all. There we go. I, I don't know which one it is. Let's try this. Yeah. Just bear with me one yeah. moment. There we go. That's okay. So I'm going to select what are the benefits of leisure reading in an academic library. And you can see this is the body of the paper. Um, the changes in a professional paper have been made to the author note. So if I go along the side here and I click on title page on the left, and then you can see there's the section here for authors. I didn't put any author information in on this one, but if I click on author note, 
this is where the change has come in. ORCID IDs, which stands for Open Researcher and Contributor IDs, have been added to that section. ORCID pr provides a persistent digital identifier, an ORCID ID, that you own and control and that distinguishes you from every other researcher. You can connect your ID with your professional information, your affiliations, grants, publications, peer review, and more. We have included the link to ORCID ID for you, and it is available also to the left of the second box down. Um, all in lowercase, it's, it's HTTPS colon slash slash ORCID.org slash. And we've included that in the notes. Okay. Um, give me one second here. Screens in the way. Gallery boxes. The gallery boxes keeps everything. covering everything for me. Okay. Okay, so I X'd out of that and I'm going to return to the title page on the left. I'm going to click on it. This paper I did last year and it was uh, as APA 6th edition. It's just a demo paper, but it was upgraded to APA 7th, but I did have a running head in it. So here you can see that you would just type the title of the paper in and then the running head no longer says running head as Rebecca pointed out, but it's right here that you just add it right very quickly to the paper. If I went to preview on this paper, you can see, that was nice of it to load. You can see that here is the uh, running head with the page number all put into the paper. And as I move through the pages, it's on all of the pages in the paper. Okay. To get out of this, since I opened it, you do have to go back to edit. Basically to make any changes, you have to go back to edit, good to know. Uh, and then I'm going to return to the body of the paper. Oh, this might not work. There we go. Okay, so now we're back in the body of the paper. Just as a refresher, if you wanted to add an in-text citation to this paper, you would click where you'd like to add the citation. So I'm going to put it at the end of this sentence. Um, parts of the services and collections of academic libraries. I'm going to click right there. And then you would go up to insert at the top, use the drop down and drop down to uh, find and cite reference. This brings me to an area where I can either search APA psych info for references or I can select one of the references from my list. So I'll select this second entrance right here. I go to site at the bottom or at the top in both places. And they ask me if it's a parenthetical citation or a narrative or a quotation and they give you the explanation of those. So ours is a parenthetical. I don't know if I can hit the button there. And as you can see, it enters it right in for you. Uh, it puts the citation, enters it for you. So it's very easy to do. If you wanted to change that, you could highlight it. You, you know, as long as it's in edit, you can remove it, add another citation. If I scroll down and look at this, not only did it add the in-text citation, but it also added the reference to my reference list for this paper. It marks it, if you see the green box to the right, as cited. And that's so if I try to delete it, it'll give me a warning that I am using it in the paper and I don't want to delete that citation. All right, if I go back up to our paper, um, Rebecca told you about the APA heading levels. You can click right under headings on the drop down and they show you all of the different heading level levels here that you can select. They have one with old headings, a consistent use of them, and because they said it provides more contrast with the text. If I go up to Times New Roman for fonts and I use the drop down there, you can see 
that font specifications in the publication manual, seventh edition, are more flexible than in previous editions to address the need for accessibility and to account for the many ways in which documents in APA style are produced and read. In Academic Writer, the default font remains Times New Roman, but the fonts can be changed by using the drop down menu, or you can navigate on the left hand side over here down to the settings tab and then select font line and spacing. And here it allows you to select whether you want to apply changes to the whole paper at once or certain sections individually. Right. Going back over to the left hand menu here, if I go to the research lab book, this is where it works you through the steps of actually doing your research. A new feature has been added. You can see it's develop my research idea, plan and track, and this is new, create an annotated bibliography. If I click on this section and I scroll down, you can see that they give me a template now where I can add an annotation to any of my references. That ends my portion of the presentation for today. Please give me a moment while I pass the controls back over to Adele, and I'll let her continue. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, do we have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. I have a question, Adele. Yes. Um, so if I want my students to be able to take a very similar workshop, just like what you're doing today with us. Um, do you make these available or are they on their own just to learn the tutorial on your uh, library website? We could offer a class for students in this. Certainly. This presentation will also be on the database page under okay. Academic Writer. There'll be a link to it so they can also see the presentation there. Perfect. That they just gave. Perfect. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and we will send you the link to the recording as well, besides posting it on the web. And okay. uh, there are also additional resources in a Google Doc that we're going to share with you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I have a question. It's Jane uh, here. Um, I would like to see if there's any change in the way they're going to cite figures, because we use a lot of paintings and so on in, in art uh, papers. Could you help me with that? Um, there is a document available. I did not print that one out, but I will find it and I will email it to you. Oh, that's okay. great. So let me just write myself a note of that. And this is Lisa, so you'll get an email from me on figure. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Lisa? Yes. Would you also, it's Jan, would you also include me on the email about figures because we refer to them frequently in child study as well. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions from anyone? <clears throat> Show them I'll go ahead and ask a crazy question. Yes, please. I figure I'll just, you know, use the time wisely. So this academic writing center, obviously I've been lecturing for a while and uh, normally I don't surf the web as much. So now this academic writing center, is this where my students can actually, it's instead of going to the academic writing lab, they could go to this site to get assistance. Is that what it's built for? Or is it just built for the faculty to, if I wanted to write a paper, I'm just like, well, I'll just make life easy. I'll just pull references because I'm used to the traditional way of going into the APA manual, figuring it out, typing up the references, you know, and, but now everything seems to be at the click off a button. So is this kind of like making my life easier to click off a button? I don't have to do all this legwork anymore. 
You know, if, I, in, if this is Adele speaking, um, it's really your personal preference, I think. Like um, the uh, template that Rebecca showed us, you know, that's an excellent tool to use and you can learn uh, by using that on how to enter everything manually too. But then the academic writer tool that we have uh, automates all that for you. But it oh, is yeah. nice to be able to know, you know, understand how it really works underneath. It's like a learning math before you actually use the calculator. But it's really personal preference. So, okay. you know, it is a helpful tool. The, there are a lot of uh, those quick guides and those tutorials are, I think, very helpful in illustrating and, um, you know, explaining why, you know, how things are happening for the, uh, with the manual and why you're citing things the way you cite them. and. Um, I think those are helpful and you can assign those as go ahead. I'll if I could Lisa. add one thing, this is Lisa. This is does not replace the academic writing center. This is mm -hmm. just a tool for students to use individually. So it's not something where they can ask questions and get feedback through this. It's just a tool for them to use to compose the papers in APA seventh format. Well, I appreciate the the time you know the department took to create this because it's very helpful so thank you whoever created this you know i'll say keep it coming <laughs> thank you thank you i hope that did that answer your question i may have misunderstood yes. it yes yeah? okay very much yes thank you great great uh, i have another i have a question um since so many of us are teaching remotely or using hybrid or sometimes online formats mm -hmm. one of the requirements for demonstrating attendance is to have students upload a, an assignment in quotes uh, that basically deals with it has to be content specific not just hi i'm here type of thing as i was watching part of the presentation and i saw them going through the tutorial and they could see the results of where they were in the tutorial or is there a way for that to be uploaded to canvas i mean because i'm thinking this is a perfect type of thing for me to ask my students to do to go through some of these tutorials and if they did that and could upload uh some form of documentation that they completed it or could i go in and see that they did, you know, 50% or whatever, um, that would be useful. Right. Yes, and I'm not sure the answer on that. Um, but Del and I have talked about that. It looks like you can embed it in Canvas, but we're not positive yet. It's something that we need to look into and get back to you. You see there's an embed link here. Yeah, I saw the embed link right. and I, I will admit before this crowd, I, where have I, how I guess I've been asleep or something. I didn't realize I've never used academic writer or rather directed my students toward this. So um, I think it's like, as Kevin said, this is fabulous. I think when did you start with this last year? Yeah, either a year it's or two It's pretty new. Ago. We've yeah. only started it a year or two ago. Okay. So we're all kind of getting used to it at the same time. Now there was some sort of self-assessment uh, let's see, I'm scrolling on the left hand side here. This is basically the table of contents for this. Yeah, because you know, in Canvas, when we put things up, when we look over in the grade book, um, the analytics that we're able mm -hmm. to look at, mm -hmm. wondered if there was some aspect of that in here, because that would have been. Um, yeah, I could, we'll have to look into that um, to see if it integrates with Canvas directly. It, it's possible it might. And then how the grading would work for if they were to do uh, any of these tutorials, would it automatically be graded? We, we could look yeah, at and I don't, I don't care what the score is of the grade. What I'm looking for is participation and or completion. Okay. Right. Uh, All right. I, want, I wonder about um, having a, a treasure hunt uh, with the basic paper would be a, that would be a nice activity and mm -hmm. uh, that you know, you could set up something that's specific to your course, but the student has to hunt for certain things. Like I have a painting that I want to include, and how do I cite that? So, um, so something like a little twenty-point treasure hunt would get them acclimated to it, 
and uh, so show them the, that it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good suggestion, Jane. It's also documentable. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's all about documenting. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other questions or did you want to look at anything while, like, while we have it open? And you all should have access to this. And like I said, it's a two-step login process. You know, you authenticate with my SGC credentials and then you have to have an APA account. If you don't so already have the APA have account, you have to create one. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I It'll, um, if you already have the account, I think it'll, and you put in the email, it'll tell you, because I think I tried creating a second account and knew I already had. Yeah, I was going to say, so I have my APA account password. We'll use that to log in when it prompts you. It okay. probably will, it'll prompt us if we've forgotten our password as well. I'm sure, yes. Yeah. I do that a couple of times a day with things. Yeah. <laughs> it's too many passwords. <laughs> too many. And if you start using it and then you find you have questions, I mean, feel free to reach out to any of us and, you know, we'll do our best to help you. Uh, could I ask one more question? Sure. Or, in the past, I've used Turnitin as, you know, the plagiarism site. Is there a link? You know, it's like I have a million account and passwords. You know, it's like another it's like there's so many and they periodically ask you to change these things. If I create a uh, password username, do I need to change it after 30 days or is it like a permanent? I've had this uh, account now for I want to say a year or two and they have not asked me to change the password. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, there was no, I didn't have to any prompts to change it either, right. thankfully. But don't and forget. There, is there a way, I'm, I'm just throwing it out. You know, if students submit to turn it in, and uh, can I use the academic write-in, you know, this web to, I know Turnitin, you know, supports in terms of mirror imaging to see where they're getting their work from, but in terms of, you know, format and APA, are they doing it correctly? Could I get Turnitin tied into this where I could be like, okay, did they do this correctly? I could just jump right over to the academic write-in center and look at both documents, flip-flop. Or... I think they're two different animals um, and they're, you know, separate companies that run them okay. both. And so uh, there's no way for us to merge that. No problem. Nice, but you know, I don't think so. Okay. Bye. I guess if there are no further questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. We all do, I'm sure. Oh, no yeah. Problem. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for giving us your time and, uh, you know, attending. We appreciate it. Yes. Okay. And we Bye, are You're our heroes all times. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll send you a link to the recording once we get all that captioned and we'll send you the link to the uh, additional resources with yes. that. All and right. Figures. All right. Thank you very much. Have a Thank nice you very much. Stay I'll take, take Bye care of you. Bye bye. Yeah, I still have something on the figures, and I'm like, oh, do we really need that?